Hello everyone, welcome back to another fairy tale. This is the Snow Queen. It's an extract from the rather long Snow Queen story. Once upon a time, there was a wicked sprite who had a mirror which made all that was good and beautiful look poor and mean, while that which was good for nothing and ugly looked even more good for nothing and ugly. If a good thought passed through a man's mind, then a grin was seen in the mirror, and the sprite laughed heartily at his clever discovery. All the little sprites thought they would fly up to the sky and have a joke there. The higher they flew with the mirror, the more terribly it grinned. They could hardly hold it fast at all. Suddenly, it shook so terribly with the grinning that it flew out of their hands and fell to the earth where it was dashed into a hundred million and more pieces. And now it worked much more evil than before, for some of these pieces were hardly so large as a grain of sand, and they flew into people's eyes, and then people were attracted to that which was evil. Some persons even got a splinter in their heart, and then... Their heart became like a lump of ice. Many of the splinters were carried aloft by the air and then blown about the big, wide world. At this time, there lived in a large town two little children, a boy called Kay and a girl named Gerda. They were not brother and sister, but they cared for each other as much as if they were. Their houses were next to each other, and there was, to the roof of each house, a small window. In summer, when the windows were open, they could get to each other with one jump over the gutter. The children liked nothing more than to sit together at the windows and talk, holding each other by the hand, often kissing the rose in their window boxes and looking up at the clear sunshine. One day, Kay and Gerda were at the windows looking at a picture book when Kay said, Oh, I feel such sharp pain in my heart and now something has got in my eye. The little girl put her arms around his neck. He winked his eyes. Now, there was nothing to be seen. I think it's out now, said he. But it was not. It was just one of those pieces of the glass from the magic mirror, and it had got into his eye. It had got into both, actually. Parquet had one, and so did the other. And then... By unfortunate means, another piece went right into his heart. You look so ugly, he suddenly said to Gerda. And these roses are so ugly, just like the boxes they planted in. Then he gave the box a good kick with his foot and pulled up a rose. What are you doing? cried the little girl. And has he perceived her fright? He pulled up another rose, got in at the window, and hastened off. Afterwards, he was able to imitate the gait and the manner of everyone in the street. Everything that was peculiar and displeasing in them. Kay knew how to imitate and make everybody laugh, except the person being made fun of. But it was the glass he had got in his eye, the glass that was sticking in his heart, which made him tease even little Gerda. 
whose whole soul was devoted to him. Because of her devotion, it meant the glass did not affect Gerda the same. On winter's day, when flakes of snow were flying about, he spread the skirts of his blue coat and caught the snow as it fell. Look through the glass, Gerda, said he, and every flake seemed larger, and it appeared magnificent, like one large, magnificent flower, or even maybe a beautiful star. It was splendid to look at. Look how clever, said Kay. That's much more interesting than real flowers. It was long, long after this that Kay came one day with a large gloves on and his little sledge at his back and bowled into Garda's ears. I have permission to go into the square where the others are playing. And off he was in a moment. There, in the marketplace, some of the baldest boys used to tie sledges to their carts as they passed by. And so they were pulled along and got a good ride. Soon a large sledge passed by. It was painted quite white and there was someone in it wrapped up in a tough white mantle of fur with a rough white fur cap on the red. The sledge drove all around the square twice and Kay tied on his sledge as quickly as he could and off he drove with it. On they went quicker and quicker into the next street and the person who drove turned round to Kay and nodded to him in a friendly manner as if they knew each other. Every single time Kay tried to untie his sledge the person nodded to him so then Kay sat quiet and so on they went till they came outside the gates of a town. Then the snow began to fall so thickly that the little boy could not see an arm's length before him. But still, on he went. But suddenly he let go of the string he held in his hand in order to get loose from the sledge. But it was no use. Still, the little vehicle rushed on with the quickness of the wind. He then cried as loud as he could. But no one could hear him, and no one heard the snow drifted and the sledge flew on, and sometimes it gave a jerk, as though they were driving over hedges and hillsides, even ditches at some points. Kay was quite frightened, and he tried to repeat the Lord's Prayer, but he was only able to remember his time's tables, so that didn't work. The snowflakes grew larger and larger till at last they looked just like great white fowls. Suddenly they flew on one side. The large sledge stopped, and the person who drove rose up. It was a lady. Her cloak and cap were of snow. She was tall and of slender figure, and of a dazzling whiteness. It was the Snow Queen. We have travelled fast, she said. But it is freezing cold. Come under my bare skin. And she put him in the sledge beside her, wrapped the fur around him, and he felt as though he was sinking in a snowdrift. Are you still cold? asked she. Then she kissed his forehead. Ah, oh, it was colder than ice. It penetrated to his very heart, which was already almost a frozen lump. It seemed to him as if he were about to die. But a moment more, and it was quite congenial to him, and he did not notice the cold that was around him. My sledge, don't forget my sledge. It was the first thing he thought of. It was tied to one of the white chickens who flew along with it on its back. 
behind the large sledge. The Snow Queen kissed Kay once more, and then he forgot little Gerda. That's what the kiss did, you see. Made them forget. And then she kissed him on the forehead. He forgot his grandmother and all whom he had left at home. Kay thought she was very beautiful. In his eyes, she was perfect, and he did not fear her at all. He looked upwards in the large, huge, empty space above him, and on she flew with him, flew high over the black clouds, while the storm moaned and whistled as though it was singing some old tune. On they flew over woods and lakes, over seas and many lands, and beneath them the chilling storm rushed fast, the wolves howled, the snow crackled. Above them flew large screaming crows, but higher up appeared the moon, quite large and bright, and it was on it that Kay gazed during the long, long winter's night, while by day he slept at the feet of the Snow Queen like a pet. What became of little Gerda when Kay did not return? Where could he be? Nobody knew. Nobody could give any information. All the boys knew was that they had seen him tie his sledge to another large sledge, and on his way he went. They did say, though, it was a splendid sledge. It drove down the street and out of town. Nobody knew where he was. Many sad tears were shed, and little Gerda wept long and bitterly. At last, she said that he must have been drowned in the river, which flowed close to town. That alas, he must be dead. The end. And that's an extract from the very long tale of the Snow Queen, because there is a very, very long version of that. But that's the sad ending where... They don't find each other, and she does presume him dead. Not long after, unfortunately, Gerda dies of a broken heart. And what becomes of Kay, no one ever does find out. But it's assumed he died. So I hope you enjoyed that tale. Not exactly twisted, because it is actually a version of the tale. So yeah. Please hit the like if you're on YouTube, share if you can, and consider subscribing. It really does help. Many blessings.